that. I should be along. Yeah, you'll want to play the winner for a shilling, but there won't be time. Well, we'll save him a sandwich. I don't know what Mrs. Brady put in these. They're very good. Hello, Roger. Hi, Harry. Checkers, eh? I'll play the winner. No time. Duty calls. <laughs> Roger saved you a sandwich. I'll have a late breakfast, thanks. My appetite won't return until... until I know what pretty Meg did in the first. Got a pound going on her, you know? Of course, this'll be the ruin of you. Let's get going. Roger, I've got it all figured out. When I get a little money together, which might be any day now, eh? I'm gonna turn bookmaker. One thirty. Now, if all horse players die draft, as you insist, the bookmakers must be getting their money. So I'll be a bookmaker. Still be betting the horses, but the other ones... See you later. You're not supposed to be behind the counter. It's quite against the rules. I'm sorry. Is that the money for the racetrack? It is. 60,000 pounds? Exactly 60,000. But see here, you know what business is... Then I'll be taking it and leaving. Don't turn around. Keep looking straight ahead. On the floor, please. Fill up those sacks. Quickly now, you're an old man. Any violence would probably be your end. Fifty thousand pounds apiece. Did you notice the nerves in old Mark here? Uh -huh. Never a quiver. He had that old conscience jumping for him, I'll tell you. Was ever a hold-up stage so neatly. You already started breaking our agreement. I said if anything goes wrong, it'll be Harry's big mouth, does it? What do I do? We agreed we'd never mention the words robbery, hold-up, or crime. We never used them for the minute we started planning, so let's not start now. No, you're right. I'm sorry. I wouldn't forget it again if I were you. Now listen, when we separate and leave here, it's goodbye. Each man's on his own. Not one of us will ever see the others again. It's a perfect job. Nothing in the world to connect us with it or with each other. It's a perfect job because it was planned that way and no one gummed up the operation. Now a word of advice. If I were you, I'd put your shares away and keep them as long as you possibly can. This money's going to be hot and if you start flashing a sizable amount, they'll nab you. And another thing, don't start collecting any newspaper clippings because the papers are going to be full of it. Just treat it normally. And don't ever think of trying it again. That's what's going to throw them. No previous method of operation, no repeat jobs. This is our first and our last. 20,000 quid apiece. That'll do me. Oh, what I could do with all this in one lump. It's better you didn't take my first advice and invest some of your earnings in some small business like my tobacco shop. A chewing gum stand on the corner would have aroused suspicion if I'd invested in it. You'll be able to funnel your share through your shop without any trouble. You were lucky to be able to buy it. There's no luck about it. I saved for it. It was part of my plan. Oh, not at first it wasn't. You wanted the money for a good time, same as I did. I think it's the tobacconist's pretty assistant that's made any change his plans. You could be right. Plus, is a wonderful girl. Be a nice nest egg to start a marriage on, that's for sure. Is that what you're thinking, Mark? Yes, I'm thinking about it, but I don't know whether she is, and I don't know quite how this is going to fit into it. Good luck, Harry. All right. Roger.
Thank you, sir. Come in again. Uh oh, excuse me. Mr. Brinker. Oh, how nice to see you. It's been a whole month. Did everything go along all right, Floss? Oh, just splendid. Business was fine. I think you'll be glad with what's in the till. I always am. I never worry. You do better when I'm away. Well, everything's shipshape. I can, I can see that. Oh, but you look tired to death. Well, I covered a lot of customers this trip, but I did pick up quite a lot of bargains for our own stock, too. What's well, a funny way to pick up stock for your own shop? Package here and there? It's the only way they sell a real bargain, one packet at a time. <laughs> it is kind of hard on the beat, but, you know, we're doing pretty well now. That we are, Mr. Brinker. So well that you really ought to give up your job on the road. It's nonsense for you to get so tired. This shop is job enough for you. You can handle this shop just as well as I can, even better. You know that, Floss. But I think I will keep the job on the road for a little while longer. You know, one of these days, we'll be able to pay for this place. Provided you don't go off and get married on me. What? You get married? Why would I do that now? I'm happier than I've ever been here. You're pretty, Floss. Very pretty and smart. You could do much better. I'm glad that you think I'm pretty and smart, Mr. Brinker. Don't you think that you could call me Mark? Call my employer by his given name? Well, that would seem strange. But in my mind, I, I have called you Mark. Plans all these months, Mr. Brinker. Mark. <laughs> and you won't be running off and getting married? You are happy here? Well, I may be getting married, but I won't be running off to do it. Floss. Floss. Now, don't go proposing right after I've done the suggesting, or you'll be throwing it up to me for the rest of my life. I've had it in my mind from the very first day I ever saw you. That rag bag you took in off the streets and gave a position to. Yes, that long ago. Talking of rag bags, I've just thought of something. I've got a present for you. Open it, go on. What a beauty. <laughs> Do you really like it? My dear, it's much too expensive and good to even take out in the rain. You must have spent more than I'd pay you for a whole week on this. And what else have I got to do with my money? I'm overpaid anyhow. I want my employer to look like the gentleman he is and the prosperous shopkeeper he's going to be. Then how do I look now? Oh, you look wonderful. Oh, my goodness, we're going to have to do something about that shabby case, though. It's, uh, just for my samples, it's good enough. Samples of diamonds, the way you hang on to it. But I don't care what's in it. Spoils the picture and we're going to do something about it. But why don't you go ahead and wash up and have a nap before supper? All right. Oh, there's that poor man again. I gave him a cigar today, a broken one. Looks so hungrily at the tobacco. Hope you don't mind. No, of course I don't mind. What's the matter? I want to talk to him. Well, don't give him more than five bob. Roger. It is you. Hello, Mark. Come over here in the doorway. We won't be so conspicuous. I'm sorry, Mark. It was an accident. We agreed not to see each other again. Believe me, I had no idea your shop was in this locality. Not until I saw your name up on the sign. When I saw she was alone in the shop, I couldn't resist going in and asking for a packet of matches. Well, I suppose a thing like that could possibly happen. Anyhow, I'm the one that's making something of it. Still full, I see, Mark. Don't worry, you won't see me again. She's out late. You're in luck. Uh, speaking of luck, aren't you a bit down on yours? Why do you ask that? Well, I... I should say I'm not. I'm taking no chances. I moved into a cheaper room. I don't spend hardly anything. You mean you haven't gone through it all? Gone through it? I've added to it. Saving in the cheaper room? No, sir, Mark, that's going to last me. Good, I'm... Glad to hear it. Now, I think we'd better separate. I know. Don't worry, you won't hear from me again. I'm glad things are good with you too, Mark.
glad you made it back today, especially today. <laughs> I never would have guessed it. Now I'm going to be crushed and smothered to death before I even learn the reason why. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sweet. I don't even let a man put his packages down before I'm all over him like one of those constricted snakes in the zoo. I don't know, but I, I had a feeling that things might not be going well with you, that you might not make it back. Today, I mean. Things? What sort of things? Well, I don't know what you do on the road, really. So I don't know what sort of things might go wrong. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Business is my end of the operation, dear. That's true, and that's the way it should be. The man's happiness is my department. That's why I'm especially glad you came home today. Do you mind terribly? I invited myself to your birthday party. You know, you're the only person in the whole world who remembered it was my birthday. Happy birthday, sweet. It's your birthday present. Go on, open it. I've never seen such a beautiful case in my life. But it also explains why you haven't bought yourself a new dress for over a month. You do like it, I know you do. I can tell from the look in your eye. You'll make me look like a plutocrat. <laughs> I'll have to increase the size of my tips. Good. Then we can throw this one into the waste paper basket. Wait! Give that to me. I... I mean, it contains all my samples, Floss. Oh, then change them here and now, or I think you don't like the new one. I'll change them when I'm good and ready. I only have one rule. No one touches my sample case. That way, I will not lose it. Well, that's a habit, not a rule. <laughs> but all your habits are good ones. And I'm not going to try and change a single one. Now, you come here and sit down. I'll get your slippers. Then I'll do the dishes and be off. Eat and run on my birthday? Well, uh, not if I'm coaxed a bit. <laughs> come here. Oh, I forgot to bring you in the evening newspaper. I don't care about the paper. Oh, but there's a marvellous story in it, all about capturing the bank robber. You'll want to read all about it. Plus, I'm really not interested. But you knew they got the fellow, didn't you? I read the headlines. They'll catch them all, I expect. I'm surprised the police have taken this long. I felt sort of sorry for the chap. I shouldn't, I know. But a bookmaker informing on him. Bookmakers aren't all that honest, if you ask me. Bookmaker? Yeah, that's what the paper said. Not one of the regulars at Ascot. They're very honest, I'm told. I understood it was the landlady that tipped the police. Oh, the landlady was yesterday, sweet. Roger something or other. This was a different name and they caught him at the track. Mark, what is it? You look, you look ill. Oh, it must be my cooking. No, no, I just have a little chill. Perhaps I'm... Perhaps I'm coming down with something. Did they really catch another of the hold-up men? Oh, why didn't I get a paper? You know, I think you are coming down with something. Look, don't worry about the shop. I'll take care of any customers that come in. Why don't you lie down? No, I, I think I will run out and pick up a paper and I'll get a little fresh air at the same time. Fresh air? It's raining cats and dogs outside. I, I really don't care about the paper. It, it, it's not important. Well, it's only to the corner. Give me your umbrella and I'll go. You'll want something to read. All right. Floss, I've done the most terrible thing. I've lost that umbrella, that beautiful umbrella you gave me. I remember you didn't have it when you came in. Well, don't worry about it. It'll come home, I expect. No, no I left it in a tobacco shop in the suburbs. They don't even know me. Someone's bound to have picked it up by now. Look, it's only an umbrella. Don't take on so. It was a gift from you. And I'll get you another one. Not quite such a nice one to teach you a lesson. <laughs> Now, you're going to look after the shop for the day, and I'm going to go shopping. There's some things I've got to get anyway. I... Now, no arguments, or I'm going to call you Mr. Brinker on your birthday. One of these days, I'm going to be able to give you all the things you're entitled to. Furs, jewellery, gowns, even a motor car. And what entitles me to them, sir? My charm, beauty, my brilliant brain? For what you've already given me, if nothing else. The love and happiness I never expected to find. And now I'm so afraid of losing. Good. That's the way it should be. Then you won't be taking me for granted. And as for those things like furs and jewels, one of these days is soon enough for me. There's something to look forward to when we can afford them. 
not care very much about if we never get them. You don't know me very well, do you? Perhaps I have a black past. I'll pry into it. Give me the chance. <laughs> things, things happen and... Yes, things happen. Some things you can't do very much about. Like gowns and jewels, but... But the others, you can do something about them. Make them happen. If I ever let you down, I'll never forgive myself. Is that why you're always saying, one of these days, Mark? I suppose so. For myself, I'll take one day, maybe two, whatever I'm given, and let the rest of it take care of itself. Much more likelihood of me letting you down. I tell you what, Floss. You get your shopping done tomorrow. Uh, next day, we'll close the place up and see about getting a marriage license. Oh. Oh. We'll close up the shop for half a day. <laughs> We're not making that kind of money yet. Oh, I can't think of a happier place to spend a honeymoon than in our own shop. Mr. Brinker? Yes. Come in. There's a bit of trouble, sir. Trouble? I think perhaps you'll want to come down to the station with me. What sort of trouble? There's a Miss Norris. Says she's your fiance and works here. Well, that's right. She was arrested this afternoon. Arrested? Arrested for what? I think you'd better lock up and come with me, sir. Oh, I have the right to know why they want to take me down to the station. Oh, I don't want to take you down there especially, sir, but uh, she wants to see you. There's no need to get worked up. I don't think it's anything too serious. Oh, why didn't you say so in the first place? You gave me, gave me an awful shock. Sorry, sir. Not very good at putting things. I'm sure Miss Norris couldn't be involved in anything too serious. What's, what's the charge? Oh, I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to discuss the case, sir. All right, I'll come along with you. I'm sure I can clear it up, whatever it is. Thank you, sir. Shoplifting. That's right, sir. But now that the sergeant's arranged bail, you'll be able to take her out. Thank you. She'll be here in a bit there, bringing her over. There must be some awful mistake. No mistake, sir. She was seen to pick up an umbrella. When she walked out of the shop without paying for it, she was stopped. But, but anyone can pick up something and forget to pay for it. She was, she was excited about our marriage. That's what it was. Yes, sir, but as you've seen, there were other items in her shopping bag, women's things, and only a few shillings in her purse. There must be a mistake. She's, she's no thief. What did she say? She said she was a thief. But she doesn't seem like the criminal type, and... If you're of a mind to help her. Of course I want to help her. Thank you for coming, Mark. 
I wouldn't have blamed you if you never wanted to see me again. Everything's all right here. We're going home. But how can we? Bail has been arranged. And when your case comes up, I don't think they'll be very hard on you. You mean you still want me? Oh, I don't see how you can. You see, it's like what I was saying about making things happen. Oh, I knew you'd find out sooner or later. Don't talk about it. Oh, Mark, I'm so ashamed of myself. I don't know what made me do it. Well, I can understand why. You wanted me to have the umbrella, and, well, I don't pay you very much, do I? It's just that when I get into one of those shops, something comes over me. Money's been hard to come by all my life. I expect that's it. Well, it's done now, and you've told them the truth, so you've got nothing to worry about. That she did, sir. She gave us a complete list, and everything's accounted for. You know, I don't think you'll have to postpone that wedding too long. We're not going to postpone it. We're going to get married tomorrow just as we planned. Oh. Good for you, sir. And then you'll know that he'll be waiting for you if you do have to do time, which I doubt. I, I think a fine will be more likely. Mark, it's important to you that I, that I tell the truth, isn't it? Why, of course. I told you everything. It's all on the sergeant's desk, from umbrella to nylons. But one thing, your brown leather case, Mark. I wanted you to have it so badly, but I didn't have the money. There, I feel better now. I'll just say that you forgot to list the case. It just contains my samples. I'm not likely to run off with it. I'll. I'll bring it back later. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but we can't allow stolen property to be taken off the station. Just make your things into a parcel. I'll get you some paper and string. Thank you, sir. Oh, can I have the key, please? Don't bother with the paper or the string. Thank you.